From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Our guest today on the show is a member of Nashville's legislative delegation up on Capitol Hill. He's Republican State Senator Steve Dickerson. Senator, I think this is the first time you've joined us. Thanks for coming on the show. That's correct. Pleasure to be here. Uh, you're in your fourth and final year of your first term. Your background before you got into politics was medicine and health care. Why in the world do you want to get into politics? Well, I, I really felt like engaging in public service was the next natural step for me. I, I've been in healthcare, you know, practicing physician in Nashville now for 20 years, and I thought this would be something kind of amplify what I've been doing. Now, how have you found being a state senator, especially this time of year when you sort of have to balance your, your full-time work as a doctor, with what you also have to do another full-time job almost this time of year being up at the state senate well I've, I've been through a couple of life experiences having children going to medical school where you sort of think you know what you're getting into but you never really do and, and the senate's been very similar to that you've been able to adjust your medical practice you're still actively practicing medicine even though you're also in public office that, that's correct i spent about eight months a year doing that have you found that your medical training once you got into politics maybe gave you a different or better perspective on some of the issues you have to deal with up on the hill <laughs> I would say it gives me a different perspective, and and nice thing about our General Assembly is it's populated by people from many different walks of life, many different professions, and so we've got six physicians now out of the 132, and we have a perspective, and the attorneys have a perspective, insurance agents, so so it gives a, a real mix to the the General Assembly. I asked the question about your background because you're sponsoring a bill this term that would allow birth control pills to be sold like over the counter medications, and no longer require a prescription from an actual uh, medical doctor. As a physician, why do you think that's a good idea? Well, and, and to be precise, they're going to be behind the counter, over the counter. Yeah, what's uh, the difference? Well, over the counter is an FDA um, uh, designation, and it also has implications. Like going cold medication. Correct, uh, correct. Uh, aspirin, uh, Tylenol, uh, yeah. and things like that. And, and that designation has implications to, as to whether insurance companies will cover it. And so, so these are behind the counter, will require uh, interaction with a pharmacist who, who will engage in a screening process. To me, it was sort of a, a needs based decision. Uh, in Tennessee, we have about half the pregnancy pregnancies are either uh, mistimed or unplanned, and wider uh, access to contraception is one, um, I'd say, strategy for dealing with that. Currently, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, who's sort of the national governing body for OBGYNs, actually recommends over-the-counter access. So this is one step shy of that. Now, as a physician, you've taken one of your oaths to do no harm. Right. While the idea is good to hold down unplanned or unneeded pregnancies, and certainly there's a benefit to that. Doesn't it potentially increase the harm to a woman? Because birth control pills are strong medication, and, and not one size fits all when you go to get those. That, that's a really, really good question. So to answer that sort of with a couple of different answers. First of all, when birth control pills came out, they had a large amount of estrogen, and now actually the doses that are provided is less than 1% of what was historically available. So they're actually becoming much safer over time. Secondly, if you look at the risk associated with birth control pills, things like deep vein thrombosis or blood clots, the risk is about three per 10,000 women per year. If you look at pregnancy, the risk of a deep vein thrombosis is actually four per 10,000. So by some accounts, not being pregnant and being on oral contraceptives is actually as safe or safer than being pregnant. You mentioned having to consult now with a pharmacist if a woman wants to go in and buy these birth control pills. What is that process going to be like? Oh, and that's one of the things we're working out now. The One of my co-sponsors is actually Senator Hale, who is a pharmacist, and we're working very closely with the Tennessee Medical Association and the Tennessee Pharmacist. What I think it's going to entail is a checklist that has the risks, the benefits, some of the side effects for the women to be aware of. They're going to sort of risk stratify. That is, they're going to figure out if they're an appropriate candidate. Does the pharmacist have an approval process if for some reason he doesn't think this is the right brand for them? Can he or he or she decide, no, I'm not going to sell you those, I'll sell you something right. else? How are you going to work that out? That will be within the purview of the pharmacist's decision making. So if the risks are too high, the pharmacist can either agree to sell or not. And at that point, I think the best thing is for the woman to go back to her obstetrician and then discuss it with a physician. I don't know if this would come up in this particular profession, but is there a situation where some pharmacists may not want to prescribe birth control pills at all, they don't believe in birth control, are you going to have one of those sort of uh, uh, abilities to have a religious right to say, 
I don't sell anybody birth control pills and I'm a pharmacist. Right. It's actually going to be broader than that. This is not a mandatory bill. It's going to be a permissive bill. So any pharmacist or pharmacy chain could either participate or not as they see fit. Is there any concern that when you make this a more routine situation for women, they might be less likely to go to the doctor for their overall health care? In a lot of cases, they go to see the doctor because they need to get those refilled and this is a good time to get a checkup. Maybe now they don't get the checkup at all. Is that good? I think that's a very valid question also. You've, you've really hit the two high points with side effects and then not engaging in routine screening. Uh, there's a, one study that I think is very, very clear that women who get access to over-the-counter contraception still go to their gynecologist. And, and actually the American College of Obstetrics says that routine gynecologic exams should not be an impediment to oral contraceptives. Now you've talked about what a positive and good thing this would be, yet only two states in the country right now allowed it their citizens to do what you're talking about doing. So is it such a great idea? Not that many states have gotten in line to do it yet. That, that's a great question. I, I think this is an opportunity for Tennessee to be a leader. And, and if you look worldwide, actually about two-thirds of the nations already have over-the-counter contraception. So this is not a unique idea. But I do think we can be on the vanguard of this for the, for the improvement of, of the health in Tennessee. The two states that do allow it are California and Oregon. Those are not necessarily states that I think lawmakers up on the Hill that I can remember right. go and say, oh, well, we want to see what the model right. legislation is in California. California and Oregon about things. How do you convince particularly your Republican colleagues, right. and they're the big majority up there, that West Coast, they might call left coast legislation sure. is the way to go on something like this. Sure. And, and I think that's a fair assessment. The, one of the opportunities we have here though is to take some of the language that California and Oregon have adopted and take those and, and literally make those Tennessee specific. And I, I think we can make this a very Tennessee law. Tennessee State Senator Steve Dickerson from Nashville is our guest here on Inside Politics today. Back to continue our conversation after you watch these messages.